In this lesson, I'll be showing you how to write the equation of rational functions when you've been either given a table of values or a graph. In this first example, I have a table of values. Whether you're given two different tables of values for the numerator and denominator or the overall table of values, you should be able to find the information that you need to write the equation or graph the function. Now, this table, these tables of values are already filled out. And so you can see what the polynomial is for the numerator and the denominator first, or you can fill out the last table and still write the equation. Uh, I'm gonna use each separate table to write the two equations because they can easily be seen from the table of values. If you'll notice in the first table, f of x, we have an x-intercept here, here, and here, which indicates that I have factors at those values. So I could go ahead and write that as x plus five, times x plus three times x minus two. And then I could do the same thing for the denominator. I have two zeros, which is two factors at x plus three and x plus two. Then I've written my function, that's done. But let's say you weren't necessarily given the two separate tables. Let's say that you were just given the last table of the overall rational function. So we'll pretend like we don't know this for now, because that was really nice, really simple, uh, fast, easy. Um, if you if you were given the last table, we can form it, we can kind of practice making the table based on the two separate polynomials. This kind of relates back to my previous video when we were sketching graphs. So if you're having trouble following, you might go back and watch that one. Uh, you're taking the y values and you're finding the ratio of those, numerator over denominator. Zero over six is zero. Six over two is three. Zero over zero is undefined, more specifically a whole because of zero over zero. And then negative 12 over zero is undefined. That's gonna be a vertical asymptote. Negative 12 over two negative 30 over 6, negative 24 over 12, 0 over 20, 48 over 30, I'm just going to leave that for now, 126 over 42, 240 over 56. Now we can find the decimal numbers for those. Um, they're just points on the graph. I don't necessarily need them right now. What I'm focusing on is these important places, an x-intercept, another x-intercept. So I have x-intercepts at negative five and two. The domain, those are values that are excluded. We know that we have undefined values at negative three and negative two, which indicates that those will be the values of either our holes or vertical asymptotes or both because domain is associated with those two things. The y-intercept is at zero, negative five. The hole was found when we had zero over zero. That was at negative three. <clears throat> the vertical asymptote was the other one, x equals negative two and not quite sure about a slant asymptote at the point at this point. So from this information, I can also write the equation of my rational function. I already showed you it with just looking at the two separate tables, but if I were to just be given this last one, I could still write the function. If there's a hole at x equals negative three, then that means there is x plus three in the numerator and the denominator. If there's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two, then that means that there's an x plus two in the denominator. 
Then I have x intercepts that goes in the numerator at x equals negative five and x equals two. So for the time being, I think that's, yeah, that's our equation in factored form. Now we could multiply that all out to figure out standard form, uh, which would be beneficial because it's gonna help us find the slant asymptote. But for now we can graph it and maybe estimate it. We'll see once we graph it. Based on this information, go ahead and sketch your graph and then come back and check with me. Based on the table, I have this information for the graph. And I did find the point for the hole by plugging in negative three to the remaining factors. And I got 10 there. So there's a hole here. Here's a vertical asymptote <clears throat> and then some of my points. Now, based on that and the behavior of rational functions, it looks like there might be a slant asymptote around here, but it's a little hard to tell unless I were to get more, plot some more points to get a better idea of exactly where that is, or I can go ahead and just multiply out my two polynomials and do long division. In either case, you should be able to narrow that down. Personally, I chose to use long division to help me figure out exactly where that slant asymptote was because I want to be precise. So in order to do that, you can see kind of my, my messy work here, um, my side work or whatever. Um, I multiplied out this numerator. And to do that, I first multiplied the first two factors. Then you take that product and multiply it by the third pro uh, factor. I used the box method to find that. And I got this polynomial for my numerator. Then my denominator I multiplied and I got x squared plus 5x plus 6 for the denominator. Now to find the slant asymptote, you would have to divide those with long division. And you might notice that I didn't actually finish out the long division. There would be more going here, but I got what I needed. And what I needed was this piece here. The remainder doesn't really matter specifically for finding the slant asymptote. So I got what I needed there. My slant asymptote is y equals x plus 1. And then I can go to my graph and put that there to help me figure out where the rest of my graph goes. x plus 1 has a y-intercept of 1 with a slope of 1. And so we've got this diagonal line. You might also hear this called the oblique asymptote. I usually call it slant. I feel like that's an easier word. And now I can see the formation of my graph. I've got this slant asymptote that's forming the behavior of this side of the graph. And then same thing on this side, like that, and that's it. So this is the graph of the function, and this is the equation of the function. We did multiply that out to get standard form. So if you need to do that, oops, I messed up. Oh, I messed up. 6x squared minus x minus 30, sorry then this would be standard form. And that's it for that one. So that was when you're given a table of values. If you're given a graph, then we're basically working backwards. So we want to note the things that were important on the graph that will help us create this rational function equation. We see that there's a hole at x equals 2. We also see that there's a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 1. There is a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2, 3. 
And then we have an X intercept at one, two, three, negative three, zero, and a Y intercept at one, no, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So based on the previous video, when we were starting with the equation and finding these things to draw the graph, go ahead and pause the video and try to work your way backwards to find what the equation would be. If you've tried this on your own, then hopefully you have found that you're gonna need the factors to, in a step to write the equation of your rational function which means you're going to have to convert each of these x values or y values to factor form. This one would be x minus 2, and this one would be x plus 1. Holes and vertical asymptotes are associated with the domain because of x, which is associated with the denominator. So these factors go in the denominator of our function. So you can already start forming, I'm going to call this f of x, our function because we know what's in the denominator. Then in the numerator, we look at the x-intercepts. We found one of the x-intercepts to be negative three, which would be x plus three. And we also know that there was a hole, which means that that repeats in the numerator. So this hole, means it repeats numerator denominator. Now I'm almost done. I do have all the factors for the numerator, all the factors for the denominator, but there is a key bit of information here that I need to put in. I did have a horizontal asymptote at y equals three. This indicates that that would be the ratio of the coefficients on the leading terms. So that means I'm gonna have to have a three in here as part of my function. And then if it's, if it's wanting in factored form, then this would be done. If you're wanting it in standard form, then you would have to go ahead and multiply it out. So let's go ahead and practice that. If you multiply it out, you will multiply these two factors first and then distribute three. In the denominator, you'll multiply these two factors. And what you'll find is a confirmation of some of the details that we saw from the graph. We had a horizontal asymptote at three and we had a y-intercept at nine. Isn't that so cool? That's all I have for writing equations of rational functions. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'd be happy to help.